hockey friends and families around the world. I am Lee Elias, and welcome to another edition of Our Kids Play Hockey. As always, I am joined by my two good friends, Christy Casciano Burns and Mike Benelli. And today's topic is a fun one. It is early January, which is not normally when we'd be talking about this, but the NHL season, the 2021 22 NHL season is about to start. Actually, I guess it's just the 2021 season for this year. But we wanted to talk to you today about what youth hockey players specifically can learn from watching the NHL with their parents, with their friends, so forth and so on. We also want to talk about how you as parents or coaches can gamify the game in order to make it a much more enjoyable experience for your kids. Now, this topic kind of brewed. We were talking about what we wanted to talk about for this week for a while. And I told Christy and Mike this story that I had heard about from Walter Gretzky, Wayne Gretzky's father, about something he used to have Wayne do when Wayne was growing up. So Wayne Gretzky, some of you may have heard from him, of, of him. He, he's, a, he's a pretty good hockey player. Um, you, you know, you may have heard his name. Uh, what his father had him do growing up was when a game was on the TV, he would give Wayne a piece of paper and a pencil, and he'd draw a rink, and he would give Wayne the pencil and say, I want you to trace on the rink where the puck is, right? So wherever the puck goes, I want you to draw it. So – First things first, Wayne started seeing where are the puck areas? Where's the heavy areas where the puck are going? And here's the other funny thing about that story. Wayne had to keep his head up while he was drawing on the paper. So he's teaching heads up hockey at the same time. So this is one of those innovative things that you're talking about from the 1960s, maybe even early 70s, that Wayne Gretzky did to acclimate himself to the game. But obviously back then, even really through the 2000s, uh, watching the game as por- form of an education has always been something that hockey players have done. And today, there is more footage, more content, more information available than ever before. And I think it's important that we talk about this today in ways you, again, as a parent or a coach, can utilize that. Because above all, and this is actually going right into the first topic, above all, making the game watching fun is super, super important. This is not meant to be something your kids don't want to do. Right. So I think the first thing we have to say is this. If your kids are hockey players and they don't want to watch hockey, they want to do something else. Maybe not video games so much, but, you know, they want to be out. They want to do another sport, something else. That's OK. That's absolutely OK. You don't have to force the NHL on your kids. Now, with that said, most kids I coach when I was growing up, uh, you know, most people I'm around, they want to watch the games. Right. I, I, it's always funny. I see a six year old who just has a recap of the game the night before and then I'll see another six year old who doesn't care. Uh, almost everybody moving up to 18 tries to watch their teams. That's, that's the way that kind of is. But we want to encourage, first off and foremost, fandom, right? It's just like we talk about with the game itself. You want your kids to love the game. So if they're watching hockey and not enjoying it, that's not the goal. I want to make sure that we put that out there right away. You can't, I can say this one more time, you can't force this stuff on your kids. But you can suggest it, and you can make it fun, right? So this is how today's show is going to work. Obviously, we're going to be talking about the NHL quite a bit. Uh, I love it. We talked about this before the show. Christy's going to interrogate Mike and I as the hockey mom, which is exactly what you are. I'm all about that. I want to know the questions that you have as a hockey parent that Mike and I don't think about. And Mike and I are mostly going to complain about our NHL teams and how they haven't won anything in quite some time um, and that, you know, why that frustrates us. And then we'll get back on topic and off topic throughout the show. Is that okay with everybody? That was great. All right. Good. So the first thing I want to talk about is this, is gamifying the game. Now, Now, what do we mean by that? Gamification is a buzzword today. Uh, about the ability for anyone to make any environment like a game, right? We're seeing a lot of this in workplaces right now. Uh, We're seeing a lot of this actually on social media and apps where, hey, if you do something, you can get reward points, so forth and so on, or prizes. Uh, This has been found to be a very, very both influential and effective way to get people to do more work or more events or more fun. Uh, And it does work. People like to play games. So when it comes to the NHL, the first thing you want to do is create fun challenges for your kids, right? So this is, this is going to be a fun topic because we're going to go back and forth. We have a few examples here for you. I think that's what everybody really wants. Like, just give me the information. I'll put it in. All right. right? So <clears throat> the first one I have here uh, is a, a really quick one. So mark where shots are coming from and circle where the goals were scored, right? So as a player, you'll learn the high and low percentages of where the puck is on the ice and how goals are coming. Now, again, I'm still talking from the intro, but I have to tell this quick story. And then, Mike, I'm going to throw it to you because I'm sure you have a story with this, too. When I was coaching pro over in Europe, all right, this was one of the things that I did. And believe it or not, I actually did this on paper and a pen. I didn't use a computer for this because I, I, I wanted to make sure that I was doing it a certain way. So what we found was this. <clears throat> After 10 games, we tallied up all the shots, all the locations of the shots, and all the goals. All right? And this is kind of basic analytic sabermetrics. 
But we were able to walk in the locker room and tell these guys, listen, when you shoot from outside the dots, right, uh, statistically, you will have to take 300 shots from outside the dots to score a goal, right? And then we were able to tell them inside the dots and inside the house, which is basically halfway the zone in, every 10 shots you score a goal. So which one do you guys want to do? You need to take 900 shots a game from the outside, or you can take 20, 30 shots from inside that area that we just told you you're scoring from. Well, here's the funny thing about that. Scoring, actually, we, we actually ended up starting to score an extra goal a game because they knew just not to shoot from the outside unless it was a pass or something like that, right? So that basic thing taught our team and the coaching staff where we're most efficient, where our goals are being scored, and why we need to look that way. Now, again, this might sound simple to some of you, and obviously if you're at a higher level, you probably have someone doing these types of stats. But even when your kids are younger, right, this is a great way to show them, look, people don't tend to score from the hash marks on the left side of the boards. All right, most goals are scored right in front of the net. Most goals are scored on rebound opportunities, second chance opportunities. You can really start to teach your kids how to score, pass, so forth and so on. So again, Mike, I'm going to throw it to you. I clearly had a lot of coffee this morning. All right. I, I don't know, just going to interrupt. That was uh, like, you know, oh, Krista, you can always interrupt. Please interrupt. That was a light bulb moment for me. What, yeah, I just so, uh, then we really should end the show. We should end the show Thank on a high you. note. It's, no, no, you're welcome. And again, this is why we're sharing this information because these types of stories, these types of situations, people don't do them a lot, right? Um, and you can make it fun. So again, on that drill itself, you know, if your kid does a good job with it, reward them somehow or discuss it with them. I, I'm also not talking about just the family time you can have with your kids. Like I'm a nerd for this stuff, right? But it's a simple way to teach your kids the game. It's a simple way to teach fundamental basics of the games that sometimes they, they might not get on the ice, especially if they're younger, right? Again, there is a, always, we always say this on the show. There's kind of a clear difference between five years old to 12 and that, you know, 12, 13 up to 18. They're different experiences, but you can do this all the way up and down. You know, so Mike, let me, let me spin it to you, right? Because I know you do a lot with the kids that you coach, um, but specifically with the NHL, with marking shots, what, what else do you like to do? Yeah, I mean, I think that's such a, a great point about where players are today because, you know, back in the day, right, uh, you'd, have to, you'd have to do this your, uh, on your own as a player. Right. Like, you know, a, lo a lot of coaches did, don't have the time or the technology. Right now, I mean, players are going to the bench and seeing and marking where their shots are from the shift before at some right. levels, at, at a lot of levels, you know, college and above and juniors. Um, you know, we, we tried to – we actually done a, done a lot of fun things like this. Uh, I really got into the – the, the geeky part of the game very early in my career with video and audio and, 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 you know, using that and trying to get the kids to embrace it. And one of the things we used to do with my high school prep school and college guys was actually have them listen to a game. No, no, no uh, video. And oh, then describe cool. the game. Uh, uh, and, and basically uh, I had gotten footage back in the day from back in Madison square garden when they had the, you know, all the, the microphones that are live there and you could hear without watching the video, listening to all the action that goes on in the game. Uh, now, you can't have access to that all the time, but, what, but even listen to really good announcers and finding really good people that know the game and describing where the puck's going, who's picking it up, who's talking, who's moving, and, and, and have the kids close their eyes and then write down what the action is in the game. It teaches so much about, obviously, communication, but the flow of the game. Right. And I think that's why people enjoy watching games or listening to games on the radio because the great announcers can bring that game to life. I try to get my kids to see that part of the game, that, that they have to understand and visualize, uh, just like you know, Wayne Gretzky was doing, where the play flows, where it goes, right. where the pressure is, you know, where the excitement happens. And you can hear that just in the voices of great announcers when you're watching the games, not only and with your own kids too, um, but with the teams, and, and especially in a remote learning environment, try to put those kind of things out there for them to experiment with and let them come back to you with some information as well. I think that's a phenomenal idea. You know, we, we should bring up here too, that uh, from a coaching standpoint, you know, uh, everyone learns in a different way, right? You have some people that are audio learners. You have some people that are visual learner, learners. You have people that learn by doing. Some people have a mix. I think for, as a coach, um, you know, one of the things I try and take perspective of is how does someone learn? Right? Uh, like, for example, I'm a visual learner. If you show me something visually, I can do it. I'm not, I am not an audio learner all the time, although I do listen to a lot of podcasts and I'm on a lot of podcasts. Uh, and when it comes to actually doing it, I can do it if you show me. But if you don't show me, I actually have trouble doing a drill if you just tell me. So 
my point is everyone learns in a different way. That's why some of these gamification things are so important. So <clears throat> Mike, to your example, you know, we'll be cliche and say, find an old Doc Emmerich game. You know, you can hear about how the puck was spirited away or the guy stick betrayed. Him. You can visualize that there, there's going to be a kid in the locker room that really responds to that. Right. And here's the thing. If you want to go next level with that, imagine if a kid or anyone really is listening to a game and starts to anticipate not the player with the puck that they're describing, but where the other players may be on the ice. So for example, if Crosby's coming in on the left side of a power play, you know, and you're listening to it, maybe, maybe you start to realize, well, Malkin's out there at the point, right? And I am not a Penguins fan. I seem to know that, which bothers me. I'm <laughs> going to have to reflect on that one later, right? <laughs> so again, we have some more examples for you here. Uh, another one I wrote down here is turnover challenges. Um, this is another one I've done with pro teams, but all the way down to the youth level. Uh, the game is all about being op opportunistic, right? It's all about capitalizing on other players' mistakes, really. That's, that's hockey. And turnovers are a major part of the game. And, you know, one thing you might want to challenge your kids to do is I want you to document, like shots, where are turnovers happening and then what happened on the ensuing play, right? A few things will happen. You'll start to realize that the puck is turned over probably more than you think. And that specifically, if I'm going to get really specific, blue line turnovers are very, very dangerous. Uh, again, I was working with a team one time. They had 10 blue line turnovers a period. Now, yeah. 10 a game would be a lot, okay, on the blue line. They were doing 10 a period. And they couldn't figure out what the problem was, right? So I was documenting this, and I showed them a picture of all the turnovers and what happened, and almost every goal was scored on the ensuing play from a turnover on the blue line. And they were able to eliminate that and change the game. But the, the entire team learned from it. And that's the point I'm trying to make, right? So those are the basic fundamentals that are really hard for coaches. Now, Mike and I know this, and Christy, I know your daughter's heard this, a coach screaming from the edge, stop turning it over on the blue line. I, I've had to do that a hundred times. And the thing is, it, it doesn't click in a game. And I understand that, like, you know, coaching is not really for the games if you really think about it. And it's tough to recreate that situation in practice. So this is a great opportunity where the NHL can teach you. Uh, again, it doesn't happen all the time in the NHL, but when it does, teams pay for it. Yeah, but I think, I think when you watch NHL games too, with your with your with your kids, with the right. kids that you coach, and you could get them, even if you just, I mean, one of the things I would I would, uh, you know, you said this right at the beginning, you want to make it fun. So right. I wouldn't say, listen, you need to sit down and watch two hours of hockey. Yes. Like try to you know, try four to four hours. Four yeah, hours. yeah, just just no, give no. them give them give them a, a finite thing to look at. And talk about a lot of different gamification pieces right. we can use from NHL games. Picking out the one or two, you know, really is, it's almost like when you're de designing a drill, right? Don't design a drill for an eight-year-old and describe it for 15 minutes. Right. It's got to be describing it for two seconds. Right. And I think it's the same thing. Like I, I try to get my kids, you know, I give them a lot of game sheets and uh, there's so many apps right now on your iPad. We have the rink right there and the kids can digitally do this kind of stuff. Uh, but the gamification part of them seeing this happens, what I try to do is I share a ton of video of and currently i'm doing this a lot with a lot of nhl players i did it with martin st louis i've done i'm doing it with trevor ziggurus right now taking video of the kids playing and then building a drill right and showing the kids these are directly translate the translatable skills this is not me going around a circle with my hand in the middle of the ice showing how great i am on my edges <laughs> right is is a lot of right. kids that's not transferable they don't do it Maybe Sidney Crosby does it, but nobody else does it. But you look at you look at taking here are, I mean, if you look at a kid like Trevor Zegers right now, you're watching him do like every pass is like a spinorama move, every bad, and it's on a stick every time. But how do you how can you show kids you can make fun? This is what you can do in practice, and we as coaches can design the drills that replicate the game as right. opposed to drills that look nothing like the game of hockey. But how do the kids know that? Watch the best players in the world right. do what they do. And then repeat, 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 and Muscle show them memory, right. that this is why these guys are able to do this. And girls is because they're the best players in the world and they practice it over and over and over again. But as my kids will point out, as you're watching this and you see these crazy moves, the game is not the time to try those right. crazy moves. Right. Well, it's maybe, may, maybe Christy, right? Maybe Christy, but think about this. When Lee, 10 years ago, no, well, maybe not Lee, he's a little more progressive. <laughs> if you tried to go down the ice, and put your, your, your stick between your legs and take a, uh, right. a roof shot from between your legs, you might get sat for right. three or four games. Yeah, Mike, I, I can confirm that, that that was not my game. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. I was the playmaker. My job was to get it to the guy that could do that. But it's amazing was... how much flexibility <laughs> coaches have 
right. in wanting players. But you're, but you're right, Chrissy. Even if for you as a player, is it the best time to put your, the game on the line to try something new? But I could guarantee if they're trying that in a game, they probably tried it in the driveway well, and at home and at practice for hours and hours. And they but, feel but, confident enough to try it. Let's quickly talk about that because we're talking about game transfer, right? So for those of you who may not know what that is at home, um, Daryl Belfry is actually someone we're trying to have on the show, I think we're going to, who is really the modern master of game transfer. And there's plenty of videos. You can look them up, Belfry Hockey on YouTube. It's an amazing resource um, of him working with Patrick Kane, Sidney Crosby, Nathan McKinnon, the best players in the world, doing a drill 15, 16, 17 times in a row just to build the muscle memory. And he has this great series of videos. Again, another resource for you. Great series of videos about game transfer. And he'll show you the drill he's done with uh, Nathan McKinnon. He'll show you Nate Mack doing it 15 times. And then he'll show you a video of him doing it in the NHL. Because, again, these are learned muscle memory skills, right? So, again, there's a little bit different than the NHL. It, it kind of works as we're talking about NHL players. But these are things that you learn, you build the muscle memory, and then you apply them in a game, right? Even maybe after practice. I will also say this, and this was kind of fun. I remember towards, uh, you know, the later part of my playing days, I had a lot of muscle memory built up. And what, what ended up happening was someone could, again, visual learner, show me a drill. Uh, and again, I, I probably wouldn't try it in a game without practicing it, but they could show me something I've never had. And I had enough muscle memory built up that I could really just do it after one or two tries, right? But, but there were years and years of developing muscle memory to get to the point where I could see someone try something and get it very quickly, right? So at, to Mike's point, and Christie's point, yeah, in the, the game is not the time to try something you've never tried before, unless you're completely in desperation mode. And hey, if it works, you're a hero. But uh, no, the, the game is all about mental awareness, situational awareness, and then applying your skill set that you do have to that situation. For example, as I just joked with Mike, I was a playmaker. That was my job, it was to get the puck to the other guys. Doesn't mean I didn't shoot, doesn't mean I didn't play defense, but my main job on the ice was to be a playmaker. So I utilize my skill sets to be in the best positions to utilize my passing ability. That was my game, right? It wasn't to do that spin around or pick up the puck and put it in the net. And, and Mike, Mike is 100% right. Uh, I, I remember the Michigan goal where the guy picked it up behind the net. It took 20 years for that to reach the NHL because it was so talked about. I remember when uh, Merrick Malik in a shootout, the longest shootout ever in the NHL against the Capitals, scored the game-winning goal by putting the puck between his leg. And, and no one had ever seen that really in a game before to that level. Now people do it all the time. If you're watching the World Junior Championships, I've seen like seven backhand toe drags between the legs. That's, you would never do that 10 years ago. Never. But here's the thing. It's all progression. The game is evolving. People have watched this, and they've seen it, and they practice it, and they get good at it. So right. it's, it's, it's amazing to see sports evolve. This, again, this yeah. isn't limited to hockey. If you watch basketball, not to sway away, Steph Curry and the entire NBA are draining threes like it's, like it's no problem. There wasn't a three-point shot in the NBA 30 years ago, maybe 40 years ago now. <laughs> All right? It's just it's changed the game. The game has evolved, right? Um, so I'm going to keep going. And I here, think, a lot, I think ahead, YouTube yeah. really has come into play here too. Huge. Because, Huge. Yes. Yes. Because now you can look up these moves, watch them, stop them, slow-mo them, continue to watch them, try them in your driveway. And I think that's really kind of progressed the game. It's a lot different than when we were kids oh, yes. growing up. You know? and, and, so. I have a whole section on that for later because it is, it is the greatest asset that Mike and I and you never had. And it's not limited to obviously just hockey, right? Like, like there's an unlimited library now. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll I've, learned how to, I've learned how to cook on YouTube. I mean, that's all I watch. Well, you <laughs> learn how to <laughs> attempt to cook. I mean, <laughs> no, yeah, I'm good. I learned, <laughs> I learned this Christmas how to make Yorkshire pudding. I've never go. made it before. <laughs> right. and you, thank YouTube you, YouTube. <laughs> the, the internet's an amazing place. So <laughs> j just a few more quick ones for gamifying the game. Um, you know, for, for younger kids, right? Uh, for younger kids, you don't want to be asking, hey, tell me what system they're playing. That's an older kid's trait, right? But as Mike said, you know, hey, son, daughter, who's your favorite player? All right, let's follow them tonight, right? Let, let's together follow uh, Connor McDavid, right? Let's watch every shift. You let me know when he's on the ice. We'll watch and we'll do this together. And it'll be fun to watch Connor McDavid, right? Or, you know, pick a third or fourth line player. Sometimes that can be fun too, because you can see the little things that they do. Or, you know, Connor McDavid's out there. What's Drysdale Idol doing? What's his line mates doing, right? There's a lot of fun things you can build to watch the game with your kid, right? And again, if I got to It's got to be thing. natural, though. That's <clears throat> the thing. It can't be forced. It has well, to be Exactly. Natural. They like it. They like it. If they don't want to watch it, 
don't push it on them. Right. I was just going to absolutely, Christy, hundred percent. I was just going to re- reaffirm that as you just did, that it's, it's gotta be fun. If they don't want to do it, just let them watch. Just let them watch. It's nothing wrong with it. You don't want to ruin the experience. Now, or just bribe with hot chocolate. That's what I do. I mean, yeah, just, <laughs> I just said, listen, go, please, please watch this with me. Cause I want to watch this, you know, but I think it's, right. but, I, but it, to, to Lee's point, um, one of the things I think you can do as a parent though, is if you don't want to talk about systems, you know, use the terms like tendencies and right. habits and right. just look at the way the player goes from the middle. I know there's a couple of years ago uh, when cross ice hockey came into play, the biggest like outrage was the kids are never going to learn what offsides is. Like, it's like, this is going to change the game. Kids will never be able to play again after eight U they just won't know what offsides is. And, you know, I used to do, I used to have a lot of fun with the younger kids coming. I go, but it, can you show me what, can I show you what offsides is? <laughs> and literally in, in the first, the first time they did it, they knew what offsides was. Right. So, but they, but you understand tendencies. You understand like my seven year old knows don't just don't go into the zone before the puck is not right. very simple. Not you know, and 50 year olds are going, my God, they're just never going to get it. <laughs> Have them watch the game in that way too. look for the tendencies. Hey, look, see how that player has a stick on the ice. Look how that player never puts his back to the play. Look how that player, um, y- you know, for the little, little kids, I've been using a lot of terminology that they can, they can really connect to like, uh, uh, Oh, Look, look how Patrick Line is going for the hunting the puck like a hawk. Right. And see how he comes down there. Look how that kid's digging in the corner like a dog. Look how they're checking I mean, like kids, a gopher. Right. Or yeah, whatever it is, right? <laughs> but they 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 uh they respond to it much differently because they can instantly they can instantly kind of visualize that animal or that that thing happening on the ice and, and say, Oh, that's yeah, that's what a dog does look like when he's right. fighting for a ball. And now, oh, do you encourage them? Like my kids will watch the positions. Like Sophia's left wing, so she's always looking to see what the left wing's doing. Joey's sure. the defenseman, and they're always intently. He's watching the defense plays. Do you encourage that, or do you want the kids to kind of get an overall? Don't hone in on just one position, but watch the all the plays. Can I just say one thing yeah, going back to Daryl Belfry? I mean, he'll say, and, and, and the guy that I work with a lot, this guy, Mike Weaver, who's, a, who's an NHL defenseman, he'll say, well, you got to watch. You're the one. If you watch what other players are doing, you start understanding how you can manipulate where right. players go as opposed to where they're getting manipulated to go. And that whole process, that's a whole other level of, of understanding the game is that where you go can influence how you can play the right. game by where your opponent goes. And, again, that's – that's not for a six-year-old, right? But the tendencies and the, and the format, uh, you bring up a great point about, okay, well, if you're, if, you're, if you're watching the left winger and that person just keeps driving down the boards, driving down the boards, driving down the boards, you go, well, no wonder why the defense are so good. They keep driving the defense, the, the player into the boards. Well, you've got to learn that the minute that player crosses over, you could jump in right. and then find players mm-hmm. that do that. You know, some of us, like, you know, you our kids – they, they tend to gravitate. I mean, I haven't met a lot of kids that gravitate towards the third and fourth line player, like it's not the superstar. There, there are, but it happens. It's going, yeah. you know, why are the great players great? Because they do things that other players can't do. And I think that's, that's, a, that's a, a, okay to assimilate to that for sure. Yeah. And, and, and Christy, I'll say this to add, that was a great answer, Mike, is that again, we do split the show up, you know, especially if you're an older player and, and I'll say 15, even through college with this one, uh, it's so important you know what the other four skaters on the ice are doing, or really actually the other three if you're on a penalty kill or a power play at some points. Right. You know, um, I can tell you this, especially from coaching, the most effective players I've ever coached know what everyone is supposed to be doing all the time. Um, and, and again, I can give you examples from this. Uh, you know, we were playing, and again, this is a little more advanced for kids, but we were playing a, a trap system. I'll just make it simple. We're playing a trap system and our players are getting frustrated. And I was hearing a lot of, you need to do this and you need to do this. So what I did is at one practice, uh, uh, we had them all rotate to each other's positions so they could understand what they, the other positions needed to do. Uh, I think I spoke this on another show that one time I had defensemen and offensemen on the breakout that were arguing. So I had the offense play defense and the defense play offense at practice just so they could learn. This is what it's like. And, and the players that know, if you're, if you're a wing, you said your daughter was a left wing, right? Uh, if I'm thinking just about this logically as a coach, as a left wing or inside the zone on a breakout, you need to know exactly what that defenseman's facing, what they're trying to do, so that you, as Mike said, can be in the best possible position to receive the puck or give that defenseman a lane out. 
Um, and once you get the puck, you have to be thinking about your center. Am I going off the boards? What plans do I have? So, you know, to, to reaffirm that this is a team sport, which it is, right? The best players know where everyone else is on the ice all the time. Um, where, where this becomes magical in the NHL, right, uh, is how many of us have seen a pass? How did he know that guy was there? He didn't even look up and he made the pass. He just, it's unbelievable. He knew the guy was there. <laughs> Because well, I, think, I think, but I think this reaffirms too why at the youth level we talk all right. the time about kids playing multiple positions. Because right. it's not so much for then; it's not so much for an eight-year-old. It's for when you become an eighteen-year-old. And right. I think watching and watching the maturation process of where these kids go. If you're a left winger and all you do is play left wing, and you only know how to play left wing, then you can be like, "Well, I can't believe this defenseman can't get me the puck." I mean, I'm, you know, I can't believe they take it out from behind the net. I can't believe. Well, if you could remember what it's like to that understand pressure understand the timing then understand where now you as a defenseman to lee's point if that person comes down and they loop up at the red line of course you're not getting a pass right. so understanding all the nuances of the game is why at the youth level we encourage so many to play multiple positions not just because we want to see if maybe they're good at those other positions but or, or be fair it's more about learning the game right. from from the goal line out and i think that's so important for kids to have uh, that perspective and that and you know that depth and and christy again not to keep nerding out with mike i appreciate you listening to us nerd out here or geek out about <laughs> hockey but you know it, it's funny because i'm remembering things now mike like when i started uh, i didn't start till i was a peewee i started really late um and i was blessed with with enough skill to, to go pretty far but i remember i started as a defenseman i wanted to be the defenseman um so i played defense for about half a season um and then what happened was uh, I had some speed, so my coach moved me up to offense. And I remember I was devastated about this at the time. I, I love being an offenseman. But uh, the fundamentals I learned from playing defense half a season of angling completely transformed how I played offense for the rest of my career. Um, and I always found that amazing because I only played for half a season. And as I got older, I found myself wanting to jump on D or jump in other positions just to learn them. Uh, it, it's one of the funny things about, you know, learning in general. You know, I got to a point where <laughs> – I love the challenge of learning I love being bad at something. It's actually, I play a lot of basketball now cause I suck at it. And I, and I love that. I love trying to learn how to shoot a basketball the correct way. And like, like I'm, I'm a, I'm a sucker for that knowledge. Again, parents at home, I know you're probably rolling your eyes. You can't get your kid to get out of bed in the morning. I, I understand, but I'm just saying that, that it's amazing what can happen if you put a kid in those situations. Um, I do want to just quickly run through the rest of these cause I want to get to the other half. Um, Again, we did talk about this. Um, some of this can be done more in the locker room uh, than at home. But if your kid's seriously really into the game, identify systems. That, that is a really big one for me. Uh, if, if someone's really trying to learn at the advanced level when they're older, figure out what systems they're playing. Figure out, more importantly, the counter system. Most NHL players, I'm not going to say all of them, most NHL players can snap a finger and change their system like that. There are some teams that have different systems per period. There are some teams that have different lines playing different systems based on who they're playing, right? So this can be a very, very uh, in-depth exercise if you're, if you're at that level, right? Um, another one, coaches, this one's really for you or parents on either side of the aisle, this one. Um, if, if you have a kid who's taking shifts too long, um, time some NHL shifts. Time them, okay? Because there's so much science behind this now. The average NHL shift is probably 35 to 45 seconds. Unless it's a power play, they get stuck or the superstar wants to stay on the ice, which they can do, right? But most shifts, and, and science shows this, after 45 seconds, your ability to output drops dramatically. So show them what the NHL players do. If your kid's out there for two and a half minutes, something's wrong. So that's another one. And then the last one, because I didn't want to leave this out, and this actually goes for um, both skaters and non-skaters, goaltending. Goaltending. Watch the goaltenders. Now, I, most goalies are, are nerds with this anyway, and they're going to watch every goalie in the league and watch everything that they do. Every goalie I've ever met, uh, is, even kids, they're watching the goalies do everything, um, which is super important. I didn't want to leave goalies out of this. But players, I'll, I'll simplify this for everybody, right? If you want to learn how to score, learn how goalies think. All right? It's that simple. I used to go to goalie clinics as a skater, to learn how they play. And I know a lot of kids go to goalie clinics to shoot, which is great. Listen to the instructors. <laughs> Listen to what they're telling the goalie. Nine times out of 10, it's how to beat the shooter, right? So if you can learn how to goalie thinks and learn how they respond to the puck, especially at the NHL level, you'll start to really learn how to score. Well, and, and especially if you're a goaltender, you'll learn how players think too. Go ahead, Mike. 
Well, why did Michigan become the Michigan, right? right. Why, why would that move? Why was that move be able to be exposed now? Over and over? We have a generation of goalies right. that are on their knee at mm. the net exposing. Right. And they're the big, and these are the biggest. I mean, so the goalies are bigger than they've ever been. That's true. The yeah, covering lightest, more than it's ever been. And, and now the way they've been taught to, to play other systems, right, is now being exposed by the best skills instructors in the world right. to, for their shooters to that exposed whole area on the top of the net. So now the goalies are starting to evolve. And you'll start to see that that, that, that move might disappear at some point, depending on where goalies evolve and to. And a new one will be uh, born but I think, because of it. <laughs> but now all of a sudden you have to be yeah. – you have to play. You can't just – you know, and again, I think going back to Lee's point, if you're a goaltender – don't watch a goaltender that's not you. You know, you can't go, well, I like I, – I watched Dominic Hasek growing up. Well, right. you can't be Dominic Hasek. <laughs> Your spine that's is actually slinky. Not, that's not yeah. normal. Like, you know, that's yeah. not a yeah. – you know, so I think, you know, knowing that there's fundamental skills and there's, then, there's, then there's just pure athleticism and then finding your game and finding out, like, okay, well, like the, the biggest rage uh, in the last couple of years when Matt Zuccarello here in New York was so popular was all the kids getting their sticks too long. Like, they all want – He's, his master gorilla plays with an, an, an extra long stick and traditionally wouldn't fit into the model of where you'd want your kids uh, stick cut. So unless you skate exactly like that and understand how he uses that stick, you can't just say, well, that's what I'm going to do in my game. So I think watching the NHL games, watching the NHL teams understand, you know, and you can do this as a parent, right. And as a coach, you have to help guide that kid through, like, you're probably not going to be that player. Like, Oh, headman. Yeah. You're not going to be him. You're, you're four foot two, you know, and I, you know, so understand, you know, when you're watching the game and you can, as, as Lee's point, as the kids get old, you can help determine, you know, what type of player they're trying to emulate as well. Are you starting to see more of that, of the kids trying to be like, you know, their star player? Oh, I want a longer stick because he has one. I'm doing this because I saw him do that. I mean, I grew up with a, I grew up with a Titan Turbo because of Mike Bossy. I mean, who the hell who, who would buy that stick? Right. You know, nobody. Like, I had you know, an me. aluminum. I had an aluminum stick as a Wayne Gretzky. I think that's that's a great. Yeah. You, yeah. you really do need to explain it to him. Help put it in perspective for the kids because they're at the stage where they're you know they're idolizing these guys and they're thinking, right. okay, this is the way to do it. And then you have to bring them back down to reality. You know, I say the same thing with the mullets. I'm like, just. I, Mullet doesn't mean you have to wear a mullet. I know you like yeah. them, but you know, let's let's cut the hair. I'll, but I think uh, I think you're right, know. you're right. Yeah, just just I'll, just I'll just be know. aware of the just be aware of the player, and 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 I think you know I I've always been with all my all the kids that I work with, you know sometimes you can't just look at one player. You know, be be you, be your play, be be the player, and take a little piece of all the good right. stuff from all those different players. And then learn how to use within your game. Well, that, and I that's think that's, what, that's a great know, message. That's like what Yamir that. Yager used to say. Yamir Yager used to say, yeah. you know, your hockey skill set's a toolbox. And he goes, you got to put as many tools in the toolbox as you can. And the more stuff you put in there, the more stuff you can fix. And he, that right. was his whole game. And he's still playing. He's in his 32nd right. season. So he might know what he's talking about. Right. Um, you know, the other thing, too, I was going to say, um, and you guys just made me think of this. A great question, if you want to gamify the game, a great question you can ask your kid. So uh, Victor Hedman, Mike, you used him a minute ago, right? If your kid idolizes Victor Hedman, who's an amazing defenseman, he's the best defenseman in the league. I've met him. He's super tall. <laughs> really nice guy, by the way. Yeah. Uh, instead of saying, you know, what does he do? Here's a good question. How would you beat Victor Hedman? If you were out there against Victor Hedman, how would you go one-on-one -on -one against him? Now you're asking your kid to critically think about, how would I beat my, the best player, in the, my favorite player, right? Um, and it's, you know, the kid might come back and say, I don't think I could. Now you got an opportunity as a parent. You know, one, don't say can't. Two is someone's going to beat him. Why not you? Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, so, or, or three, your kid might be teaching himself how not to get beat on the ice. So there's a lot of fun things you can do here. And all these players, by the way, they will all tell you that they're constantly trying to learn all of them. I mean, the, 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 these, the big difference, I think, Mike, from when we were kids playing and now is that these players train year round. They just don't stop. There is really no off season. The, I, I joke about this. The off season to pro athletes today is that's just when games aren't being played. They're still working. They're still playing, right? These guys are getting back on the ice right now as this episode's airing, right? They, with COVID, they have not not been skating. They're probably the only people that could find ice actually during this entire year, right? right. But that's the truth. They keep moving, right? So again, goaltending, 
That's a great one. You know, if you're a goaltender, how would you have stopped that puck? If you're a skater, how would you have scored? You'll also learn. I, I, as, this is me talking coach to coach right now or coach to parent. Uh, second chance opportunities, rebounds, tip-ins. We do not practice those situations enough. And I, I, at the youth level, I think it's something like 40 or 50% of goals are scored on second chance opportunities, right? So again, from a team aspect, start teaching your kids how the NHL players get second chance opportunities in the net. I always joke, Mike, you'll love this, Chris, you'll love this. I always joke with my offense that in front of the net, like right in front of the net, that danger area, I said, there's only one play if you're an offenseman and the puck is there. There's only one play right? But you got to be ready for that play. If that puck comes into that danger area, which again is usually, usually a rebound, right? There are very, there are very seldom situations where you're going to have a, like a perfect pass to put it in the net there. There's one play. Are you ready to shoot the puck or not? Are you ready for that rebound or not? That's something I learned a lot from watching the NHL, how those guys tip, how they rebound, how they're positioned, how they're always yeah. facing the net when the puck might be behind them, ready to shoot, hoping to God that Victor Hedman doesn't hit them in the back because that would hurt quite a bit. So um, I'm going to transition here. So we, we, again, those are some of the ways to gamify the game. The, the other one, this is kind of a quick section. I'm going to, I'm going to pour through this real quick. It's, it's just identifying different skill sets, right? And, and again, you can have fun with this with your kids, but skating, shooting, passing, puck protection, um, what players are doing without the puck. Uh, Christy made a great suggestion before of what positional players are doing in their position. That's a really great thing to do. And then teamwork. You can't underestimate that. I mean, and, Christy, that goes right into teamwork, right? Knowing what the other players on the ice are doing, right? So again, I'll, I'll use a power play as an example, right? Um, you know, 95% of fans have one suggestion on a power play, shoot, shoot, <laughs> right? You know, and the players will be moving it around. And, and you know, those yeah. of us who coach understand why they're not just shooting the puck, right? And I'm sure a lot of you listening, I'm not trying to be condescending. A lot of people understand that. But you have to know what every player is doing. There's a reason we have someone called a quarterback on a power play, right? You're looking for the right shot, not just any shot. I've seen plenty of teams take 45 shots a game and lose. <laughs> you're looking for the right shot, right? So these skill sets, if you're a coach or a parent or, or a kid wanting to learn more, they're things you can focus on, right? And again, as Mike said, you got to be realistic about some of these. You should absolutely watch how Connor McDavid skates he is the best skater I've ever seen in my entire life. But you also have to understand that's Connor McDavid. And you can aspire to that, but watch what he does with his blades. How can we work on this outside? And keeping in mind, that kid, it pains me to call him a kid, but he is. All right. That kid <laughs> has had more skating instruction than probably anybody on the planet. Right. I mean, he was trained to be the fastest player in the league. He worked for that, but you can learn from him. So, Christy, again, I'm, I'm going to spin to you and then spin to Mike on this. Um, you, and you said it earlier, you alluded to it. Your daughter's a left wing. She probably watches that. She probably walks, watches for the skill sets, how they do things. Right. But I'm guessing when, when your kids would watch, you know, you'd hear things from your family. Wow. Look how he does that. Look how she does this. So forth and so on. Oh, very critical. And then they'd be critical too of some of the plays that they'd say like, why would he do that? They'd be scratching right. their heads. Right. And then as it evolved, it made sense. Right. Oh, you know. The other thing I just want to say is watching as a family, you definitely want to make it fun. Right. You may have kids in your household who don't like hockey. So here's what you do is you kind of gear up for the big game. Let's say, you know, my daughter's a Sharks fan. So if there was a friend who came over, was it necessarily into hockey? We'd make it fun for her too. Uh, hey, we're going to bake cupcakes in, right. uh, in the colors of the sharks. We're going to put jerseys on. We're going to watch the game together as a family and just make it, a, you know, tailgate right before the game in right. your house, you know, do a lot of fun stuff to make it less of a, you know, instructional moment. Right. And as they're watching it, they're going to absorb it and really have a good time as a family. It's going to be one of those fun, you know, family memories too. It doesn't have to be all, you know, you need I, to learn yeah. this and you need to learn that as if, especially now in the pandemic era where right. we're not going to be able to go see some of these big games, you know, bring the big game to your home, make right. it fun. Yeah. And, and, and Christy, I, I actually mean this. I'm being sincere. I love that you keep reaffirming that we did start <laughs> the episode with that. No, but it's, it's so important to remember. Cause like my, again, Mike and I are geeking out hardcore on this episode for those of you listening or watching. Uh, but again, Christy, you're bringing it home. 
and, and I can't agree with you more. You have to enjoy this stuff. It cannot be forced. If you feel like you're forcing it with your kid, you should stop, right? Um, again, really quick story. Unfortunately, not a hockey story. Really quick. Uh, I moved back to Pennsylvania in uh, 2017 after uh, several years of my wife serving in the Air Force. It was all around the world. And I had a really hard time reacclimating to being back uh, in my hometown, which I was never expecting to live in again. And the thing that really brought me home was, again, this is 2017, was watching the Eagles with my father, right? So, you know, and, and for those of you who may not remember, the Eagles won the Super Bowl that year, right? But every weekend, every Sunday, getting to watch that with my dad, that really started to get me to be, hey, hey you know, this is okay, right? So that was worth more to me. I'm not a, I'm, well, I am a football coach too, but what I'm saying is I'm not as into football as I am into hockey, but that experience watching and talking the game out with my dad, that was really special to me right? Um, obviously being with my mother too, there's a lot of things that went into it, but just being able to be with my father on the Sundays to watch the football and, and obviously winning the Super Bowl made that a little bit of a cherry on top, right? The Eagles won the Super Bowl. Sorry, that's fandom coming through. I apologize. They beat the Patriots. It was great. Anyway, you can experience this with your family, right? right. Uh, uh, the hockey team wasn't great that year, but um, yeah, I, I, we do need to keep reaffirming that. Um, anyway, Mike, real quick to you so we can start geeking out again. Mom's watching. No, I'm just a Christian. I'm totally joking. I'm totally joking. Uh, any skill sets, um, again, that, how that applies to kind of how you watch the game or how your kids watch the game, so forth and so on. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it's just it's just the way the nuances of how players take angles and when they right. take shots. And you know, Christy, I'll, I hear that all the time. Like, why would that player do that, or what would they think? I go, they're in the NHL, yeah, yeah, right? And so let's not, you know, you want to, you want to get critique. Go sit at the right. blue seats at Madison Square Garden for a game, right? Because right? right. you know, a, peer, a period right. in, it's like they're not shooting. Season's right. over. Yeah. Close yes. it up. You yeah. know, this is over. So get dancing Larry out here. Pull down the curtain. Yeah. It's yeah, so done. I mean, I, I I tend to I tend to want to uh, you know one of the things I, I think that that's really cool for me is um is watching and if you have the space in your home too you'll see the kids like they'll pick up uh, that's why I'm a big floorball proponent but they'll pick up a floorball stick they'll pick up their hockey right, stick right. and they'll be out there watching the game like and they'll start doing stuff now if you don't mind you know some stuff getting broken in the house every now and then or <laughs> the floor is getting marked up if, unless you have your hockey wrap around on yeah but you're but there's, there's basically there's solutions for that no, just kidding, yeah <laughs> <laughs> but but there's but there's ways like if you have to. I see now like today, uh, you know, with all these kids outside playing pond hockey in, the, in in January and February, or they're outside rink, like right outside their backyard. Parents have the TV up, the games going, they're playing. Like my little guys always like I, I I desperately want him to watch games with me. I'm like, please just sit here and watch the game with me. No, I'm a, I'm a player. I'll play. <laughs> right. I like to play. I don't like to watch. Like I don't want to watch other people play. I want to play. Okay, and then you know we end up watching, you know monsters versus aliens or something like that and then i'll have to kind of you know that's you know get my get my scores from the phone you look like but, you're having flashbacks mike you all right oh it's terrible it's terrible i can't i'm like come on just sit here and watch me play you know, all but, the but fans of monsters versus aliens are all listening to this show going, how could you say that about that? <laughs> well whatever it is uh, but i think i think it's uh, but i think i think it's uh yeah, but it, there's definitely a time and a place uh where you want to you know you can put your put your kids into a situation where they can learn from the game right um and then, and then other places where you can learn from them, right? Say, okay, it's right. it's just a game. Right. I'm not a big like I, I don't I don't right. like me. I just don't come from that that cloth where I could give up like a a full day to watch football or watch right. hockey. And I, I'd rather go out and play. And I think and I think that, you know I, I I like that about some of the kids that I coach too. Is that you know if there's a uh, ice on Super Bowl Sunday, they're all showing up to Super Bowl Sunday ice, right? And they're skating, and there's nobody else in the building, and you know, but, you know, taking those pieces in the game as the kids get older and saying, okay, find a piece, see what they're doing, look what their hands are. But I think more importantly, uh, it's, it's telling, you know, it, putting it into their heads that they don't just do this in the game. This didn't right. happen because they did it one time. They probably done this a thousand times and they failed and failed and failed. And now what they're doing here and, and how you can, how you can then translate that to new game. Right. I think using lessons. all those other resources we talked about earlier are, are going to help you do that. There's so many life lessons that sports teach. Um, that's a few of, you know, Mike, you're, again, you're making me think here, you know, one of the other lessons, this is, this is a sports lesson, but it really is a life lesson is um, I've seen it where a team will be down two nothing, three nothing in the first period. And as you said, oh, that's it. The game is over. Well, one of the nice parts about the modern NHL is that that is not true anymore, right? You can be down two or three goals and really lose the game very quickly. And we've seen this so many times over the last few years. So I think a really important lesson 
uh, really important, all right, especially in youth hockey players who haven't really got a grasp on this yet, is the game does not end till it ends. All right. Uh, in fact, what I tell my son is that, and my, and my players, the score doesn't matter until the game ends. It's just keeping tally of the goals scored. It doesn't actually matter until the clock hits zero at the end of the third period. That's when the score actually becomes official. So it's not about the score. It's about you making sure you're playing the entire game. Right. Uh, and, and again, this goes into focusing on what you control. Uh, there's a lot of deep lessons here, right? Like the score can't dictate how you play all the time, obviously situationally or what some coaches may do to combat a score. Yes. But your output is not dependent on the score. If, if you're out there and you're down by four goals in the third period and not trying hard, that says a lot about your character. It's a major opportunity to teach. And I'll tell you what, if you watch the NHL, the only time I've ever seen NHL players stop skating is when there's one or two seconds left and the pucks probably get nice. Otherwise, they're going 100%. The whole game, it doesn't matter, right? That was something that was really, um, how do you say it, motivational to me. Mm -hmm. um, another quick, again, make, Mike, you made me think of this, when you said your kids want to play while they're watching. Um, again, this is for a little bit more of the, the, the older kids, late teens. But one of the things I used to love to do, um, and again, this is the way I was, I'd get on an exercise bike and I would watch for uh, Keith Primo played for the Flyers at the time to come on the ice and he'd be on the ice. And I would, I would pedal as hard as I could his entire shift until he got off. And that's how I trained for NHL endurance in my mind. Right. I'm going hard cause he's going hard. I'm going to do a game simulation with him right now. That, that, again, that might sound crazy to some of you, but that's a fun way to do cardio. It's a lot more fun than just sit on the bike, not doing anything. Yeah. I, I think it's I don't it's, it's that crazy I just had yeah. my son and he thinks I'm nuts I'm like if you're gonna watch hockey get on the slide board and, right. sli and skate with them right. and, right. He does, and he actually does every once or, in a while or I mean, stick sometimes handle too or stick handle yeah. yeah I mean it's just be active and you know as I'm sitting on the couch telling them to get on the slide board <laughs> I'm like get on that slide board yeah. good right. job yeah. Yeah. yeah you're doing a good job I'm like, I'm like the one with the uh, you know the uh, yeah. but yeah, so so you have I think I, I think it's I think it's uh, I think you're absolutely right find those are cool ways. Right. Um, right. Like talking about all the other uh, stuff that's out there. The actual physical part is the best part. Right. All right. You, you know what else is out there, guys, which we haven't mentioned, and I really need to give a plug for the AHL. Yes. Our local hockey team is amazing. Um, our Syracuse Crunch, they're so community oriented and they're really focused on helping to grow local hockey teams. Um, they're so welcoming to have. They'll even have a crunch night experience. So we sign our kids up for our crunch night experience. This is when they were younger, obviously. And it started off with a pizza party. The players would come down and have pizza with the kids, That's you know, awesome. and meet them hours before their game. They would get to, um, you know, get autographed pictures of the guys. They'd have their own experience out on the same ice that they're going to see in a few hours, the big guys play. But it's so fun. And then they give us the opportunity to uh, raise money for the team as well. Right. So right. we have the kids in their team jerseys. They get to chuck. They sell pucks. And the, uh, the, the fans get to chuck pucks. We raise money by selling the, the little uh, pucks that they, the fans get to chuck. So, you know, we walk away a couple hundred dollars. And the kids get to see the AHL players who they just met on the ice and there's something so energizing about that experience as they're watching as a team. You always see it the next day in their games. They're, right. they're more on fire. They're playing better as a team. You know, they're trying different moves. It's really, I really have to give a plug. If you have a chance for your team to hook up with your local AHL team, you know, it's an incredible learning experience and a great way to bond the team as well. Christy, I'll take this a step further because you're 100% right. Oh, here right. we go. <laughs> yeah, I'll take, I, I know, because uh, you're 100% right. I'm actually glad you turned us here. AHL is absolutely a group you should watch. Uh, SPHL, ECHL, right? NWHL, National Women's Hockey League, NCAA, um, any of these levels, if you take your kids. Something, something I learned early on in coaching, right, that I always found to be amazing, uh, especially with the younger kids. If you bring your younger kid, to see any of those levels I just spoke about. These people are heroes to them. Heroes. They don't, they don't care if it's the NHL or not. This is someone who's playing at a high level coming to speak to them. And I'll tell you what, I, I was working at an NWHL game. Uh, actually, Mike, Mike was there too with the uh, Connecticut Whale. And uh, it was the last game of the season. And after the game, all of the ladies came out to sign autographs. 
And we got this picture of a, a young lady with one of the players. And she, you, the, the way she's looking at her, you, you can – I don't even describe it much further. It's, this is a hero moment for her, right? And it just goes to show you it doesn't matter what level it is, right? If you bring your kids to a hockey event, they are going to be starstruck. And it has such an impact, right? And, and again, I take myself even back to that game. You know, I can't imagine what it's like for both those women, both the player who probably didn't have that outlet as a child, that now is a professional hockey player, and then the young girl who has the idol now that was not there 10 years ago. You know, I, I love speaking to, to women in the NWHL today because, um, I, I mean, especially some of the, the more uh, seasoned players because they'll talk about the 1998 Nagano Olympics where USA women won the gold medal and how that changed their life. Right. And a lot of men talk about the 1980 team, right? And how they idolize these great moments in hockey and how it changed them. And again, I have a daughter, right? I, I love that she's going to grow up in a, in a world where there are professional women hockey players and she'll see that. She'll see that and understand I can do this, right? That's a, that's a huge thing. So that spans the whole lexicon of hockey, whether you're a boy or a girl and no matter what level it is. Um, I also want to bring up NCAA hockey. I know I mentioned it and uh, all, all, all of us could speak to this. I love, love watching NCAA hockey. And I'll tell you why. It's because it's not the NHL. There's a lot more mistakes, right? There's a lot more critical plays. And the games are typically way more back and forth. Now, again, I love the NHL. But as a coach, especially for teaching moments, you can really pick apart in a, in a positive way an NCAA game much easier than an NHL game where they don't make as many mistakes. I was watching a game not too long ago. It was Notre Dame, Ohio State. This is how these games go. Notre Dame goes up 2 nothing really quick, right? A lot of people are like, oh, it's over. Ohio State scores a goal. It becomes 2-1. to one. Notre Dame scores a goal. It's 3-1. to one. They pull that goal away. Then they give Ohio State a five-minute power play. Ohio State scores two goals. Now they're up 3-2. to two. They, I mean, that's how these games go. It's just back and forth and exciting. Um, also, what I like about it is unless you're a huge college hockey fan, watching those games with your kids is great because they don't have any affiliation typically to a team. So now you're really just watching the game to watch hockey and you can learn so much from it. I mean, so much, right? And again, I've coached at that level, and I still learn probably a lot more watching them just by the mistakes that are made. I should say I pull more out of them for coaching moments. So, Christy, to your point, any hockey that you can watch on TV right now, right, or even like you said, if you can go to a game, an event, which please, Lord, soon, <laughs> right? It's a, it's a major moment teaching moment, motivational moment, inspirational moment, however you want to look at it. Just a fun moment to, to do. Yeah. So, um, again, Mike and I have been on the ice behind the bench and in the, the stands at those events, right? You've watched your, your son and daughter at those events. You've been on the ice yourself. I don't think you've ever probably hip checked anybody, but that's okay. Right. So the, the last thing I want to switch to here, sorry, I, I kind of told you the coffee guys, it's getting to me. All right. <laughs> the last thing I want to switch to here is, um, Christy, something you alluded to earlier. Um, and, I, and I tell every parent this and every kid this. The, the biggest difference, if you ask me what's the biggest difference now from when I was growing up or we were growing up, uh, it's there's an unlimited library of content at your fingertips. All right. Again, I was a nerd with hockey as a kid. I would scour books. I would go, I'd literally go to uh, video stores and be like, do you have any hockey VHS tapes I can watch? Anytime there was a used video store, I'd run in there. This is the truth. I'd run in there and, and look and see, is there any hockey stuff in here? Because that's all you could get back then. You, you couldn't find anything. In fact, I'm looking at a stack. Seriously, I'm looking at a stack of VHS tapes right now that I still have here. Uh, one of them might go like this is Roger Nielsen's hockey. I remember yeah. when I found that. Roger Nielsen, by the way, godfather of using video in hockey. God rest his soul. Great, great, great NHL coach. Um, but that was my experience, was like going to stores, trying to nitpick and find these things. It's unlimited. You can go online, search inside edge crossover stops and probably find something now. It's unlimited. I wish I had YouTube in its current form as a kid, right? You can look up anything. So if I stress anything, that is, you can look up old NHL games. You can, I said Daryl Belfry is a great example. Mike has a ton of stuff out there. Just there's no limit to what you can learn online right now. Christy, I can hear you in my head. Don't force your kids to do it. <laughs> All right. But if they want to do it, it is an amazing resource to teach the game. Mike, I, I know you use this stuff a lot as well. 
Yeah, I mean, it is, uh, it, and not, not only, you know, I think YouTube in all its forms, right? YouTube and right. all these skills coaches that are putting out so much information. Yeah. It's actually, unlimited. frankly, unbelievable that they can not only get it on film, but they can articulate why they're doing it, when they're doing it, what level of player that they're, they're, they're performing that skill with and teaching. I mean, one of the things I found, too, when we talk about the NHL and the gamification is how unbelievable – the NHL 2021 like EA sport series is as well. Right. And I see because you can, you can get the player. Like, so you could see a YouTube video. You could, you could simulate it in an NHL uh, video, Nintendo or whatever. And then you could, and then you're playing the game and you can start manipulating. Like one of the things my son does, which I think is, you know, I can't comprehend it because he, he, he because this, he'll do this all day is, you know, be the GM of a team right. and find the type of players and put them together and then let them, and then watches them play, you know, right. and he's like, right. so, you know, so, but I think, you know, those resources, they didn't exist. I mean, I had, you know, we had bubble hockey for God's sakes, or, you know, you know, so it's, <laughs> or blades of steel. Yeah. yeah blades was... of steel. Right. <laughs> and, and so, you know, you weren't doing the spinner ramen, right. but maybe you were, you, maybe you fought. You couldn't. A it was bit, fighting. But, it was all fighting and shooting. That's all that game was. All fighting, but you I think, you know, taking <laughs> You guys have a particular channel you'd recommend on YouTube? Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a tough question. Do you have a favorite? I mean, I like I've said this oh, many a few times. I love okay. Daryl Belfry. It's yeah. it's not that I don't know. Okay. It's it's just I I almost want to say I wouldn't limit it to to any channels. It's I would it's the searching for me that I love. Right. Yeah. If, if right. It's about the it's anything, it's about the skill. Right. I think I would start. I mean, I, I, honestly, I, I'd probably start. You know, one of the things that USA Hockey did a, a while back was build a really great live. Right you know, quick skills and they have in their mobile app, but now it's live on YouTube. Anybody can access it. But I think, you know, saying, wow, I really, I really want to understand more about crossovers or I really want to understand about shooting dynamics. And then now maybe that's where you're using with your four-year-old, five-year-old. Mm -hmm. And then you want to next, what's the next step? Maybe I'm going to Tim and I'm looking at, you know, his thousands of hours of video out there. Maybe then I'm going to, I want to have some fun. I'm going to get to go Pavel Barber and see all the right. crazy, crazy stuff he does. But then, then you go and you'll find uh, fanatics, you know, real fans of the, all these people. And they, they, they put together the best compilations of videos. Right. And, and they break them down for you, too. And they break them down, which is, you know, right. again, it, it's, it's so much time and effort that goes into this stuff. I think, there's, I think, I think to uh, Chrissy, I think more importantly, it's, it's typing in and finding the skill that you want to uh, kind of point on right. as opposed mm -hmm. to just searching endlessly uh, you know, cause there is, it, it could, you, it could be endless. So I think it's fine. You guys do that as coaches too. If you're, if you're I, I looking do. to convey. I steal so, I steal so yeah. much you steal stuff. stuff coach. I do a hundred percent. Look, look, I'll tell yeah. you this. And, and I learned this early on in my coaching career is that your quest for knowledge as a coach and a player for that matter has to be endless. It can never stop. Right. And I think actually to make this kind of serious, one of the mistakes, a lot of, uh, I'll say hockey people make is holding stuff close to the chest to kind of save it for themselves or save it for their kids. It, it's a mistake, right? It, there, there is more than enough information and more than enough players to share all of this information. Now, I'm not saying you should go to an opposing team and teach their kids how to do something, but if you find something worthy for a team, show it to everybody, show it to everybody. Now, here's another one as a coach. Okay. I, I don't think a lot of people realize this. This happens more in football than in hockey. The opposing coaches will get together before a game and exchange film. Like gladly, right? It's it's a it's a common courtesy. Again, that happens more in football than it does in hockey. But I'm I'm always amazed when I speak to the coach I'm about to coach against, and we're exchanging film, right? We we want to learn from each other. It, it's a mutual thing. But yeah, look, I, I can tell you this too as a writer. Um, I I'm I have this ability now to search for like how how to say this, or like like if I want to describe hand motions, I'll search how to describe this hand motion, and I'll just start to read and you know it'll become my own. But it's just anything you want to learn. Remember, Google's mission, Google owns YouTube, for those who don't know. Their mission is to answer the world's question in one click, right? So start asking questions. Great questions demand great answers, right? If you, if you watched our interview with uh, Mr. Spizo, we said that on there too, right? So that's another thing is learning how to ask great questions. Here's another funny fact about this. We're talking about younger kids. Um, you know, how many of your kids have asked you a question and you have to say, you go find the answer. <laughs> Why are you asking me? I, I remember, uh, again, life lesson. I always like to do life lessons here. 
when I was in college uh, in broadcasting, my, my uh, mentor used to say to me, you better find, you better look up an answer and look it up before you come to me. If you come to me asking a question, you better have exhausted every resource possible to find the answer before you come to me, right? It's never been easier to do that ever, right? So, so again, I'm not saying coaches, you should close your doors or anything like that, but you are teaching a skill of, hey, you can actually teach yourself and become more accountable. You can create this culture of accountability and learning, right? Because it's one click away. You don't have to find a book or a VHS tape or have the guy in Blockbuster look at you like you're crazy because you're not crazy. You just want to learn more about hockey. Okay, that was a flashback. That had nothing to do with I that. was going to say, I was going to say, No, but yeah, look, look, Christy, to answer your question, yeah, look, you can yeah, find so you the guys, so you, like. you guys use it too. Yeah. Oh, we do. Totally. And, yeah. and anybody who doesn't tell you that, look, NHL coaches talk with other NHL coaches. NHL coaches talk with other sport professional coaches. They learn. There's, there's, there are galas where these guys talk to each other. Go ahead, Mike. I'll just say, you know, yeah. so one of the, you know, one of the things we've done before the pandemic, right, is I, I attended and ran and administered tons of coaching clinics, you know, live coaching clinics, and, and you know, in charge of or helping the, the, the supervisors of these events go out and find the talent right. that comes to speak. You know, we had, you know, when you have guys like uh, Mike Sullivan <laughs> and, uh, you know, John Cooper Right. And, you know, all these other, all these great coaches, you'll see them sitting in on everyone else's, right. uh, you know, seminars. If somebody's, uh, Roger Nilsson was a great example. If you went to the Roger Nilsson's coaching clinic, it wasn't a bunch of youth hockey coaches. Right. It was all pro coaches. All pro coaches. Yeah. And it's, it's like, well, what is that guy doing here? Well, this is how you learn. This is how you evolve. This, and so even for parents, right. And, and to say, well, listen, I'm, I'm, I know this, I played, I was, that I was on the championship, you know, 10U program in Montclair. I, I, I know what I'm doing here. Well, you have to educate yourself all the time. All the time. And go out and find the best resources. And I'll tell you, you watch players and, and, and skills coaches, they'll change the way they're coaching based off of what other people are, are bringing to them. Like, wow, you know what? I, I never saw it that way. Right. I'm going to now tweak the way I'm going to coach this. So, so I use that all the time. I've evolved in just – Simple thing like shooting, that, you know, and, and the structure that goes in the shooting, trying to find the 10 different things that 10 different people like, come up with your own consensus, and then share that with your players. What easier way to do that? I don't have the time to go film my players, so I'm going to take everybody else's film and everybody else's content and then make it and then try to make it my own because the one part I, I need to be aware of is am I, am I presenting this to my kids in the, in the proper uh, age-appropriate setting? And, and the right skill level. And that's my job. Christy, I can tell you this too. Uh, and again, Mike, Mike always makes me think about my own experience. He starts drawing these memories out that I like to share. But I, I remember um, when I was coaching in Europe, I would go on YouTube, borrow, <laughs> I'd borrow NHL clips based on situations we were trying to teach our players and edit together a 10 minute video of exactly what we're trying to teach. So you're talking about, do we, do we use it? I remember we had three or four skill sets or three or four situational awareness um, uh, things that we wanted to teach. We borrowed NHL footage, put it together, edited it, put, put things on it, paused it. I mean, we did everything and we showed it to our teams. We use that as a coaching right. device, right? To teach our kids. So yes, yeah, long story short, um, th this is the shortest answer I can give you. You must always be a student of the game if you're serious about the game. It does not ever stop, especially at the NHL. If you watch Sidney Crosby or anybody on that caliber, anybody they are always trying to learn something new and you can uh, crosby is the best example you can see his progression he comes in the league he's really bad at face-offs he's he works on face-offs the entire summer becomes the best he wants a new backhand shot he works on the backhand shot the entire summer has has a backhand shot that is now as deadly as his forehand shot uh, he wants to learn he's consistently constantly learning and they're always looking for the people that can teach them something because that's the difference at that level everybody wants to learn you know, so again, it is an incredible resource, obviously not just for hockey. I've always said that the, the biggest plight of today is that we have unlimited access to nearly unlimited information, and most people are kind of lazy when it comes to using it. You know what I mean? Like It's there. It's there for the taking. So um, again, depending on how old your kid is, I mean, they make videos for six-year-olds, they make videos for 16-year-olds, they make videos for 56-year-olds. It doesn't matter what you want to see. Um, and then there's also applications. 
you know, we should give a shout out to our friend Bryce Salvador and uh, Team Genius. They, they created an entire free platform with skill sets that's complete gamification. You can check that out, right? And you can learn skill sets from an NHL player and NHL people. Um, and I do have to give a shout out too to my really good friend, uh, Chris Kabui, who runs a channel called Hockey Tutorial, uh, which is one of the three biggest hockey YouTube channels on the planet. Um, and and this, this is what I love about Chris. And Chris, you'd love these too. Never played hockey at a competitive level, right? Just decided one day he wanted to put together a skating tutorial because he loved to skate, right? 10 years later, he's the biggest YouTube channel there is when it comes to hockey tutorials, right? And, and, and he'll fully admit, I never played the game at a high level. I'm just trying to teach you as I go. So what he provides is this kind of peer-to-peer level education of like, well, this is how I learned to do it. He brings in guests. This is how I learned this skill. You can learn that. It's a completely different experience. You know, if you're just a rec league player, that's a great resource for you because it's peer-to-peer, right? Not all rec league players are trying to be Sidney Crosby. They just want to know how to skate, <laughs> right? They just want to know how to shoot. So um, I would be remiss if I didn't say this, but at the end of the day, how you experience or draw knowledge off the internet is a completely personal uh, and personalized experience for each person, right? Find what you love, find what works for you, make sure it's reputable in some way. I think that's, that's another thing. You don't want to find someone who doesn't really know what they're talking about and explore, explore for hours at a time and then get outside. Don't just stay inside exploring all day. Again, <laughs> see now my parents in my head are popping out, like get outside and go <laughs> get off YouTube. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, look, look, I hope we've given all of you listening or watching this uh, some really cool tools and some insight into this. Again, this is always meant to be a conversation. Uh, the three of us love the game. We're all experienced in the game, but this is always meant to be a conversation. So if you have ideas, you have thoughts, you have gamification, things that you've done with your kids that have, or more importantly, have not worked, we want you to share them. I want to give you guys the last word before I do my, my nitro close, as I call it. Uh, Mike, I'll start with you, then I'll go to Christy, and then we'll get out of the show. <laughs> I know you all have things to do at home. Yeah, no, I just, like I said, I, I, think, I think it's uh, when, you, when, you, when you look at the, what we're asking uh, parents, kids, coaches to do, look at the opportunities we have in front of us. We have, we have unlimited resources. Watching an NHL film, playing as an NHL player, watching you, uh, archive film, uh, and then, then now embracing that and finding, okay, there's plenty of stuff out there. My kid doesn't like doing this. This is what I did as a parent. My kid doesn't like doing this. This is what I did as a parent. And finding those ways to inspire your kids and, and to you know, pick up a stick, play a little hockey, be, uh, idolize their, their favorite NHL player. And I think uh, if you could do all those kind of things and, and the kids can replicate that a little bit, you know, you're going to be in great shape. So I love it. Yeah. Um, my dog is uh, piping in because he also right. said, don't forget, about, don't forget about me as part of the family. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. right. That's the alarm system. But, um, yeah, it's a great, especially now. I mean, it's so challenging. These times are so challenging and rinks being shut down and, you know, ice time is really difficult to find. Here's an opportunity for your kids to learn and grow and you know, do something fun as a family. Make it fun for everybody. Even if your kid doesn't, if you've got a kid who doesn't play hockey, you can still involve them and make it fun. And, and as you said, we, we need to continue to grow and to learn. And that should never stop. Never. And, and above all, again, to echo all three of us, above all, make sure your kids are just enjoying the game at whatever age or whatever level they're at. Priority is that they're in love with the game and they enjoy the game. Once that's established, if they want to take it a step further, they can absolutely use some of these tools and tactics that we brought here today. You know, I, I was thinking about how I wanted to close this episode. And I kept saying, like, oh, maybe I should wish people best of luck with their NHL season. But I don't believe in luck. And I'd be lying if I was wishing all the other teams luck. I, don't, I want my team to win. Uh, but that's not the point. The point is this. Enjoy the NHL season. Enjoy that we can even have hockey on TV during this time. Who knows? Maybe we'll even be able to let us back in the buildings towards the end of the season. Uh, above all, obviously, stay safe. Uh, we know it's a tough time for hockey families, but this is an opportunity. The NHL season, the NCAA season, they are uh, AHL, ECHL, SBHL, NWHL. But make sure you watch the NWHL uh, season and playoffs on NBC Sports this year. They are all opportunities for you to, A, spend quality time with your children, above all. B, use it as a learning opportunity. C, 
just love the game. I don't know how else to say that enough times that. So listen, that's gonna do <laughs> yeah, right. That's going to do it for this episode of our kids play hockey. Obviously you can find all the episodes on our kids play hockey.com or go to Apple podcast, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts, we're everywhere. We can't thank you enough for being such a good supporter of us. Uh, our communities continue to grow, which means you can check us out on Facebook, our kids play hockey. Uh, but above all, again, our kids play that's where you can get all the information. That's Christiana Christy. Chris, oh man. Christy Cassiano burns. Come on, it's a tongue twister. I've never messed that up. I feel okay about that. That's Mike Benelli. I'm Lee Elias. Thank you so much for listening to this episode, and we will see you next week.